Hello, this is John with Theology Ed. All right, we'll call this, I don't even know what we'll call it. Um, I guess we call it part 60 of the iPad Go 2 Explained series. And because we are going to get into that, uh, but we're really going to be focusing on the October 28, 2023 uh, par, uh, partial lunar eclipse and its relevance in predictive programming. Remember, eclipses uh, to the occult uh, do not just govern the night. Okay, it's not like if there's a lunar eclipse, something's going to happen the night of the lunar eclipse, and that's it. That's the end of story. Uh, they usually govern a period of time after it, either until the next lunar eclipse or for eclipses, maybe for a month, and for solar eclipse, for lunar eclipses, for solar eclipses, up to the next eclipse, uh, next solar eclipse, these sorts of things. Uh, that's how they view it. So it's like uh, these events are ritually important and to have power and influence over a period of time after it. And so what it really tells you is, you know, what can you expect them to think uh, they're going to be capable of doing uh, uh, during a period of time, not just on the date of the eclipse, but subsequent to it as well. Uh, so that's the question. Right now it is October 28th. I'm recording this video. Um, and we want to just, well, we're going to see uh, what there is to say about this eclipse in predictive programming, there is actually quite a bit. So let's start with the film that I've just been, I've been analyzing recently, which is White Noise. Uh, White Noise seems to depict this eclipse. Uh, as Jack, uh, in sort of a, a period of rage, he's upset uh, at Babette's infidelity. He found out about uh, her trading sex for drugs and he's gonna go get mr. rabbit okay that's where he's headed on the way we get partial lunar eclipse representation here uh, in the clouds they often do this in film and as he drives they keep this eclipse on him as if he's driving to the place under this eclipse okay this is a partial eclipse now in my slides that I had that I'm gonna get to um, in well, in, in the series, once we get to that part, uh, which is probably the next video in the series, but uh, the White Noise Explained series. Uh, I had this slide. So here are the eclipses uh, coming up. You can see that we have this October 28th, 29th lunar eclipse in, well, that's today. Uh, but in 2024, we do have a penumbral eclipse on the 24th or 25th of March, which could be this too. Um, but I think it's partial. I think that's a better explanation of what we're seeing in their depiction. Uh, and we are heading towards April 8th. Now, how do I know that this is leading to April 8th? Watch the sequence. Okay, so here he is. He's saying shoot instead of talk. He's past talking. Now we're in full war. Shoot instead of talk. You're a man, Jack. We all know about men. This is Babette. He's imagining what she said to him. Um, he looks like he's on fire it also sort of looks to me like uh, something like an oil rig or something burning you know when you see the oil fires but um, <clears throat> uh, now he remembers what Murray said he's thinking Murray had said maybe violence is a form of rebirth maybe you can kill death okay so he's got this in mind and he's getting to this motel which is where uh, mr. rabbit or mr. gray is uh, is at is located now he gets there and of course you see the symbolism of eclipses now uh, you get this an arrow and you get the instructions to read it this way I think that's what that means here's one two three eclipses represented by these uh, circles okay and these rings the interesting thing the question is how do we interpret it my one reading of it that I think uh, is very possible is that we're going towards April 8th, 2024. So this would be the April 20th eclipse. would be the first eclipse after the film was released, solar eclipse. Then you would get the October 14th annular eclipse followed by the April 8th uh, total eclipse again, the next Great American Eclipse. And you read it this way. Um, the other possibility is that you start with April 8th here, and we get the two subsequent eclipses, which I think take us into like 2026 or something. Okay, uh, so this is maybe a little beyond that. Now, 
why do I think that this has to be a sequence of eclipses related to April 8th? He, as he approaches the motel, he goes up and he's going to look through one of the rings. This is fascinating because it's a window. Uh, clever selection for the film. He looks through this. We get this very interesting view. He is now looking through the eclipse to something else. He looks through the first eclipse to what? The keys. He's going to go to Mr. Bunny's room. Okay, Mr. Rabbit, Mr. Bunny. Mr. Rabbit. <laughs> they, the, the girl called the rabbit Bunny. And so, either way. Um, in, in, the, in the film. But uh, here we have the rooms and the key. You can see he's in room 8. The key is gone. It's the only key that's gone. And fascinatingly, something else is missing. Look at what's missing. That's the key here. Interesting, the key. The, the key is what's missing. We have a missing key at the 8 spot, and we have a missing 4. There's your 4, 8. That is Looking ahead, the key is April 8th. Uh, and when you're going to Mr. Gray's room, Mr. Rabbit's room, you're going to, to room 8, which suggests, I think, that we're looking at 4-8 here. So he's looking through this eclipse, and everything from here forward is driving to this event that's going to happen under the eclipse at 4-8. He's going to go leave this spot and you can see the missing things this is also in germantown interestingly um there's the eclipse and the path and he's going to look this way and he's going to walk from there past the probably october 14th eclipse heading with intent to kill to mr gray's room which is immediately below this letter o that room there is room 8. Okay? And so uh, the eclipse seems to be there. Now, if this sequence is understood correctly, then the partial eclipse that is when Jack is driving to kill, okay, when he's going with his uh, intent of evil, uh, that eclipse, which is in front of his face um, on that little trip in the reflection, that one would probably be the October 28th partial eclipse. Okay, October 20th, 2023. Now, let's go on and see another instance of this eclipse where I think it shows up related to the end times apocalypse stuff, and that is in the movie Freaky. Uh, Freaky was released November 13th, 2020. Um, Actually, it was also released October 8th in the Beyond Fest initially, and then, you know, in the U.S. release, it was November 13th. Uh, that's an interesting date because October 7th was the uh, um, when Hamas uh, attacked Israel, according to all news reports and everything. Okay? Freaky is, an, is a very important movie. We've covered it uh, in, other, in another series, the Get Out, Escape the U.S., series uh, in relation to these films. You have Get Out, You Us, and Antibum. So this this film is produced by Blumhouse, Peel, and McKittrick. Okay? Get Out, Get Lunar Font, Out, Annular Font. We've done this repeatedly. The T is the 20th letter of the alphabet. This is the year 20. Out, 15th letter, 20th, 21st letter, 20th letter. There's no 15th month. 1 and 5 is 6. 6, 21, 20. That's the annular eclipse in 2020. That's why it's annular font. Get lunar font. G is 7, letter 7. E is letter 5. T is letter 20. 7, 5, 20. That was the buck moon lunar penumbral eclipse that came 14 or, you know, one two weeks after the annular eclipse. Okay? Get out related to that uh, eclipse cycle, which is, I think, doubling down, not just for that eclipse, but I think the October 14th to October 28th Eclipse uh, series here in 2023. And there's a long story for that from iPad Go 2 uh, that I can get into and probably will in the next, maybe this one or maybe the next series. But it's Get Out of the U.S. 9-11. And this is us, but the, you, the people who are us are asked, who are you guys? What are you people? Or something. And she says, we're Americans, you know, their weird voice, right? So get out of the U.S. And in case you think I'm reading into it, get out of the U.S., that's crazy. It's, he's not, it's not actually supposed to be read as like a sentence. 
Well, the next one in the series, I'll confirm that, yes, you are supposed to read it that way, because McKittrick says, get out of the U.S. before the war. Anti bellum before the Civil War. Okay. Blumhouse says, get out of the U.S. You should have left. The Hunt, that's this movie is about left-wing uh, elites hunting to death for sport right-wing or conservative uh, people that they don't care for. Freaky, and this is about false flag uh, stuff, and I'll get into it in just a moment, okay, with the moon. But then Jordan Peele has Get Out, Us, he has Candyman related to Antebellum, which is where we have two things going on. Uh, one is the bee stings that change the DNA of the person and lead them to die. Okay, the bee sting that causes a major alteration. So you got to watch out for the bee sting that will change you and in that. And then also there are clearly race uh, issues at play there. Um, and then it is a scene in there where the, the, the character goes in the one room looking for somebody or something and doesn't find it, says nope, and tries to get out and can't. Can't get out. Nope. Can't get out, and here's Nope, the next movie. So this is this this these films are all communicating a message in predictive programming. Now, one of them is Freaky, and that's why it's very interesting. Now, Freaky it has I've whole I've done analysis on this in other places. I'm going to go quickly to the scene. Here we have the girl who is the one wearing the mascot outfit at a football game, uh, and her friends. They're woke or whatever you want to call it. Okay, and she's waiting for her mom. She's late again. The mom is, uh, and they're like, there's a cycle roaming free because there's a, a killing or killing spree uh, before this. Uh, and they said, well, she'll be here any minute now. Well, she's not. So now uh, the girl wearing the beaver suit is waiting out alone. Um, and, yeah, and, you know, she's been calling her mom. Interesting thing, what happens when she calls her mom, she finds her mom is at home drunk and asleep. She had been drinking swan song, uh, liquor, wine, whatever it is. Okay, okay, so she's drinking that. Interesting, very interesting, because swan song is important. It comes up repeatedly in relation to this um, event, okay? The, and, and so let me let me show you that in a second. So swan song. Just remember that. We'll get to it again. All right. So she's out there. Her her sister, her sister, her daughter is a police officer. Sees that she's drunk or you know passed out, and is gonna go. She's passed out on the couch again. Can you come get? Well, the power on her phone goes out. Battery died. It was low, and then the lights go out. Okay, lights out. Then, of course, shows up the serial killer. He goes to kill her. Gonna try to. And while that's happening, he gets out his la dola, sounds like the dollar, knife. And it's going to get a full, a total eclipse here. See it? The moon is totally eclipsed. She's about to get stabbed. His mask falls to the side of her. And then this opens up the ground. You know, looks like it's opening up and it becomes what? A pyramid. She's going to be sacrificed on the top of a pyramid. The shot taken at the pyramid is in November because it's the beaver moon eclipse being represented. It was a November total lunar eclipse last year, 2022 in November, right? So it's the beaver moon eclipse. Uh, and that's the attack on the shot uh, on top of it. And here in IPEC 2 we have the shot at the top of the pyramid in Scorpio, so in November, late October or November, and that's being depicted here. Okay, now that may also be, because that's after the December uh, 4th, 2021 eclipse and before the April 4th, 2024 eclipse, so it could be November 2022 or November 2023 that the shot is taken here. But in this one, it's clearly 2022 because the beaver moon eclipse happened in November 2022. Okay, there it is. Here's the total eclipse again, the beaver moon. Um, what happens? He doesn't kill her. Her police sister shows up. He gets scared off. But the stabbing with that magic knife uh, will ends up causing them to switch bodies. So the woke girl ends up becoming the serial killer and the, you know, 
middle-aged white man uh, who is supposed to be the angry white guy uh, has turned into a complete sissy, like a teenage girl who, you know, runs around scared of everything. She, that's part of the humor of the movie, right? Uh, supposedly. And and so she ends up being the serial killer and the threat. Uh, and he ends up being targeted while being hunted by police and so on because they treat him like the bad guy. Okay. So there's your false flag switching. Right. And, and the people you think would be the good guys, the... the you know, the, the woke people who are supposed to be nice and tolerant and all that good stuff, they're the ones that go after the people who are often vilified, uh, middle-aged, you know, whatever. Okay, so now, you know, this is after the eclipse. He runs off, all that. Um, I say the eclipse, the eclipse representation. She goes home after the scare. She is not totally transitioned to him yet. She's taking a bath. And here we get some sort of eclipse symbolism, I think. She is covering her face. It's gratuitous. It doesn't belong in the film at all. I believe that's hinting at either the penumbral eclipse uh, that happened in May 2023. Um, or maybe a solar eclipse uh, that happened. But you get that. Then, here's where it gets very, very interesting. Remember, we had the total eclipse, the beaver moon eclipse depicted. And that happened in 2022. Then we had this type of eclipse in May. Then we get a partial eclipse outside while she's in the bathtub. That's all you get. It does not ever become a total eclipse. You get the lightning again, the magic, and that lightning lights up the room we see. End times and a bear. Okay. Bear. And what animal is that supposed to be? It's just, I don't know. Well, you tell me. But what you end up having, though, is is pointing to this partial lunar eclipse that comes after the beaver moon total eclipse in 2022, which would be this one right now, October 28, 2023, would be your partial lunar eclipse and associated with end times explicitly, right? Just says it right there. Okay. Um, supposing that we have that correct. So here are your possibilities, the May, May 5th penumbral eclipse, uh, which again, not impossible because things did just ac uh, accelerate after that, um, right? And so we we're still seeing that happening. But this looks like a partial, and if it is a partial, then October 28th eclipse seems to be depicted right there. Now, <clears throat> and then she, you know, and you, you almost get are those like Halloween colors. Uh, I mean, it has a feel. Well, I don't know. Could even be pointing at that, like, you know, October 28th, and you're leading into the Halloween season. Uh, I mean, it gives you that impression, at least. I don't think those are Halloween decorations, but... All right. Uh, so now, we've gotten two cases where the October 28th eclipse seems to be pointed at uh, pretty clearly in relation to very, very big events. Uh, one heading up to the attack on Mr. Rabbit and what will lead to in uh, White Noise, the death of Babylon, USA, the, the whole system Babylon dies in it, as well as uh, probably Mr. Rabbit. Okay, uh, but I'll get into that in the White Noise series. Please watch that because it's, it's, it's going to be important. Um, but anyways, yeah, so let me keep going here. Now an iPet Goat 2. This is the justification for including this in the iPet Goat 2 Explained series. Um, we know that this calendar represents the 2017 calendar, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way through, back row, front row. She in that calendar is between the 9 and the 10 months in the front row. At the second half of it, which is the September 23rd, 2017, you know, so-called sign in the sky, Virgo, the constellation, clothed in the sun with the moon at her feet. And over here you have the uh, August... Great American Eclipse. Interestingly, it does look like we may get this X depicted here, indicating that that might hit, giving you an additional hint that we're looking at the seven-year period beginning there for them. Um, these months are joined because it was a leap year in the lunar calendar, and that means you had two sixth months in the lunar calendar year. July, the seventh month in the Gregorian, was the sixth month that year in lunar most you know it doesn't overlap exactly but uh six month and then august was the sixth month as well and so they're joined 
as like two moons put together. Um, and there you had the 2017 starting point. But then it's also the 2020 calendar. We've seen that. Instead of reading it back to front, we read it direct left to right, ignoring position front to back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, depending on where the head starts. Okay? And so we go like that. And on that reading, we get the sixth month and the seventh month. She falls in the middle. There's your annular eclipse 2021, followed by the buck. Remember, a male rabbit is a buck. A uh, buck moon uh, in 2020. Okay, Pisces to the left, Aquarius to the right. This was supposed to be the big transition for entering the new Eon or era, okay, the Eon of Horus in Thelema. That's who these guys inspired this. You also see uh, Trump, hair, position seated, uh, lockdowns coming out of him in March, the lockdown being really extreme in April, calming down, then coming back in July, and then making a return in December. Now, um, these heads are joined on this calendar because there was a blue moon or a second full moon in October on October 13th first into November 1st and so they're joined again by the moon now uh, let's see here but this calendar is not just the 2020 calendar we have the rabbit looking over this half it looks like this half is actually pointing to the second half of 2023 the year of the rabbit now I'm gonna make a quick observation here thanking a guy a commenter Chuck, he has his own channel. I do not have his full name. We can look in the comments and find his comment uh, on one of the previous one or two uh, IPECO to explain videos. Um, I should get that name. But it, it is, uh, he observed, and he says he put in a video. I've not looked at any of his content yet, uh, but it's a really good observation. Uh, this is divide. D-I-V-I-D-E. Divide. And it splits at this eye, the rabbit, and you have the chaos after and before none. Um, and we have a lot of divisions in IPEC Go 2. You have the splitting of the flag, we have the uh, land splitting um, where the 9 11 event happens. I'll, I'll show that as a metaphor, I think, for the division of the United States and so on. But uh, this is the 2023 year of the rabbit. There is your land, Palestine or Israel. Okay. Uh, the land of Palestine, the state of Israel, right here. Okay, that's where the conflict happens in October to November. It takes off. Palestine is the center of the conflict, which is what we're seeing right now. And uh, this, as we saw in the previous IPEC Go to Explained video, is the position of Damascus, it looks like. So it's very possible that we could see something happen to Damascus in November. Uh, and over here to the east could even be Iran, or it could be symbolic of just something big happening later um all right now so you see there's state okay so i think that we can make a connection we should add to our little seven year calendar that they have the june 21st date's already in there as the important date preparing for the big center event the december 14th rollout of therapy and the uh uh Biden Electoral College victory on the same date, the eclipse date, the semi-sextile eclipse, which is what the symbol from Kingsman signified. And we get the same symbolism used for this eclipse, the circle, the annular eclipse with the dot, the eclipse with the dot. We get it here as well in October, the eclipse with the dot, which I don't think is coincidence. I think that there's somehow in their minds a linking between these two eclipses, which explains this period of development of everything until right now when we actually are seeing the stuff take off. Because in white noise, uh, we actually have uh, this eclipse playing a central role at the deja vu. You know, the whole sequence in this film is what? The movie was re released in 2022, had predictive program about a toxic train derailment that has de that it, that has deja vu as one of the primary symptoms of a person exposed to the toxic uh, gas, the airborne event. Uh, the film makes it clear the train wreck itself is about something to come. It's not just the train wreck itself isn't the main event. In fact, in the film, the train wreck happens. Some people are exposed. They don't die suddenly. The news doesn't cover it anymore. They just go back home, and things seem to go back to pretty much normal, uh, just like what happened 
in February in East Palestine, Ohio, in real life when there was a train derailment with toxic uh, gases being released or toxic chemicals being released into the air, uh, leading to evacuations. But the coverage was brief, not too in-depth, and life seemed to return to normal pretty quickly, and the rest of the world forgot about them. Okay, but it was a big event, very similar thing. Then we go to uh, what happens in the real world. Notice that this happened in East Palestine. This train wreck is pointing to a future event. Okay, the future event it's pointing to is the war in Palestine, which happened starting in October 2023. Now, I explained this in part two of the White Noise Explained series. Um, but, you know, if you, you look... Deja vu is a symptom of the train, um, exposure to the train toxins, to the airborne toxic event. And Jack is standing in this uh, you know, space here with this position in front of a Japanese flag. So this represents the sun. Okay, uh, The Japanese flag uh, does represent the sun. It's called the flag of the sun. Okay, And um, this guy has deja vu when looking at Jack, but he doesn't just see Jack in this position. He sees the eclipse happening. Basically, he, this is for us to interpret. See, here's Jack's position. Jack's eclipsing, getting closer, almost full. Now it's full of eclipse. And then what happens? This is clearly looking forward from this film, 2022, from the actual train event, which uh, happened in real life in February 2023. This is an eclipse that comes after that one when there will be deja vu because the man at this point has deja vu as you can see his face he's like I've, i saw this before he's afraid okay um and here you have the symbol this is the symbol we see here so there it is eclipse with the light or the dot okay Here's Donnie Darko. He leans in front of the light. Eclipse with the dot, the eye. Here's Donnie Darko again. Eclipse with the guy to the side position. Here's Donnie Darko. Black hole sun with the uh, symbol of the um, uh, time travel bridge or, you know, whatever it is. Rosen, Einstein, Rosen bridge or whatever. I forgot what it's called. Okay. Here in uh, Candy, uh, uh, Candyman. We have the symbol of an eclipse with a male and a female, male being solar, female being uh, lunar, with the person looking over the shoulder here. And we, if you think that's reading into it too much, then we get it again immediately after that, but this time with Candyman's reflection in that position. Uh, here we have You Can't Leave, the eclipse with her putting her hand in this weird position to get it way up high and to make it a dog star barking. Okay, so we get the eclipse with the symbol. Here it is, and you uh, you should have left again. Um, I thought I said that's what it was. You should have left. Um, he's going to l gradually lean in and start to position the camera. He's going to block the light out. It says, leave. You should go now. Finally, he eclipses the light. He no longer is reflecting himself naturally. We have single eye looking at him. His own reflection has you know, violated sort of the laws of nature here. It's, looking at him from a third person perspective with this eye and we get the same position there's the eye looking at the eclipse the eye looking at the eclipse you should have left now it's too late and we get an ipad go to ring dot ring dot ring dot okay so this is a very common thing uh the symbol but the symbol here we see has to apply as well to the october 2023 uh, eclipse, uh, I think, because that's what, really, and so that gives us a link from the 2020 calendar to the second half of 2023 under the rabbit and the year of the rabbit, and so when we go and look outside at the external, you know, outside the classroom, we have the bunny, the rabbit, looking over in the 23 doomsday division of the United States, uh, the 9/11 event and the splitting of the U.S. See, the fence goes into the water. That's because there wasn't water there before, okay? And that's why he is stranded on a little island, uh, just like the people in the 9-11 Twin Towers in 2001 were stranded. They jumped. Well, this is his stranded position here in an island, and he jumps to his death. Okay, that's the idea. Um, now, we mentioned swan songs. Remember, so in relation to this eclipse uh, that's being symbolized here in Donnie Darko, for example, well, as he walks out of the room, right after that eclipse, what do we see? U.S. flag and this Led Zeppelin uh, swan song records 
a poster. Swan song again. The end. You're at the end. Once you get here, you're getting to the end. Okay? We also get the swan in IPECO 2. Uh, this eclipse, I believe, is a solar, uh, is the annular solar eclipse. We've already seen uh, that it is under the rabbits. I think it's 2023. And I think it's a solar eclipse uh, beginning of the annular eclipse coming in to finally make a ring of fire in a minute. Uh, and he's calling on that. Now, some people say that's a lunar eclipse. Uh, if the annual eclipse is August, I'm sorry, October 14th and the lunar is October 28th, they're going to overlap in the time periods they cover and their influence is over. The two of them work together, so, you know, it, in a sense it's almost irrelevant, but I do believe it's solar because the sun is red here. Um, and that red and I bet go to red light usually is the sun. It always is, as far as I can tell. Uh, it also just looks like an annular eclipse on its way. So here's an annular eclipse on its way as it goes. See how it actually has a darkened spot, and then you have the crescent looking like a, a you know, just like this, totally blacked out. All right, there it is again. The Lowell Observatory, so, you know, the annular eclipse is the, not just the ring of fire, it's, it's getting there and then leaving it, okay? Um, whereas a partial lunar eclipse looks like that, or like this. So you may get some redding, but you're also not going to get the same appearance. So I just think this is an annular eclipse. But but if it is the lunar eclipse, you know, fine, covers the same period of time. It's under the year of the rabbit. He is getting ready to, the CIA is getting ready to carry out great violence here soon. He's like summoning it, using it. This is the, to ta ta uh, tap into the power of this eclipse, if you want to think of it that way. And going to lead to this but look carefully at the overhead shot here where's it at there it is okay there he is as it comes in he's directing the flying shark attack prime missiles okay in the direction needs to go and what do we get a swan okay we have the swan song again that's three times we get it in Freaky with the Eclipse. We get it in Donnie Darko with the Eclipse. And we get it in IPEC Go 2 with the Eclipse. The October, one of the two October eclipses. Actually, the two events seem to co go together because uh, when you have a solar eclipse, you often have a uh, lunar eclipse, either the uh, full moon before or after. So within 14 days. Because, it, it, yeah. Anyways. So, um, so there you have it. There are a lot of reasons to think that, um, well, there's a lot of reasons to think this is a very important eclipse period right now in October 2023, and we are heading uh, into very intense times. Should get out of the U.S. according to their own predictive programming, uh, and it is heading into a major conflict, I think, that swan song, of course, is for the U.S. Uh, one of the main main things it's a swan song for, right? Swan song, U.S. flag, and it's going to destroy there. That's where the uh, part from the plane is going to fall and kill Donnie underneath it. Well, there it is. It's a swan song for that. So, um, uh, but of course, it's much more than just that. We're we're on our way towards uh, very very bad times. Uh, should be pretty clear by this point. All right. Uh, like, subscribe, share, take care, and blessings.